Hello my beautiful friends, it is Mimi here today and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you guys my favorite tips and tricks on working from home. <laughs> Never ever really had to think twice about Who you step on, you'll just pay the break away Send them the bill when you can today I have worked from home now for about 10 years on and off because we do have our own office but when we first started our first business Lexi Hair 10 years ago I worked from home for about two years so I learned a lot in that period of time because it was my first time ever working from home and then when I had Alexa three and a half years ago I also worked from home um, and I still work from home I would say part-time and office as well and at the moment obviously as everybody else I am working from home I have learned a lot in the process at first it felt very overwhelming and distracting to be at home I personally prefer to work not from home I like being in the office or coffee shop I like to be out there with other people's energies but sometimes there's just no other choice and it's important to use this time wisely to still be productive and in the right mindset to create the things that you want to create in your life. So if you'd like to learn how I work from home, then keep on watching. All right, the first thing I'd like to do is just start my day as if I were to go to an office. So even if I know this day I'm not going anywhere at all, I will still wake up and follow the same routine I would if I were to go to an office. So for me, it is obviously following the same morning routine that I usually do, you know, waking up, making myself a cup of tea, making myself some breakfast, having it with my family, and then obviously dressing up. To me, it's so important to dress up because I went through a period of time where I would wake up and just work from my pajamas and I never felt productive. I would work from my bed. It just didn't work for me. It didn't feel good. I just would get distracted. I wouldn't really stay focused on the task that I needed to do. So I created this habit a long time ago wake up and just treat it as any normal day as if you were to go to an office get out of bed dress up put on makeup i find that for me at least dressing up and putting on makeup gets me in a different state and i just feel more productive and more professional and also if i were to hop on on a call uh, with my colleagues then i feel that i'm ready for the day as if i were to have a real physical meeting so that's really important for me is just getting ready in the morning for the day Number two is find a dedicated space for you to work from. So in your house or in your little apartment, wherever it is that you live, find a little spot that is your office, quote unquote. I personally have two spots because I prefer to stand. I find it very hard to sit for long periods of time. So I always choose a sit down area where I can sit and work on my laptop and an area where I can stand and work. And to be honest, you don't need any fancy um, kind of setup to do a stand-up desk. I usually just use whatever I have in the house. As you can see here, I'm using this box for storage. I flipped it around and just use it as the stand-up desk on top of a counter in the kitchen, put my laptop on top of that, and voila, you can just use that as a stand-up desk. Anything where you're directly facing into your laptop. And even if I'm sitting down, what I like to use is this little tool that Alex got years ago. I'm not sure if they're still around, but definitely look for it because this is amazing. It's called a rooster, I believe, and you set up your laptop on this rooster and then again, you are directly facing into your laptop as opposed to looking down. Because imagine if all day, all we're doing is looking down, it's really negatively, negatively affects our posture. And this is something I always keep in mind is that if I'm sitting in the same position or if I'm standing in the same position, where am I looking directly into? And I really want to make sure that I'm always keeping my face straight. So very important point. The next thing I do once I decide whether I'm sitting down or standing up is I set up music. I really enjoy working to music. However, I can only work to music that's really soft and lyrics free. If I am listening to some kind of a music with words, and maybe it's a catchy song, I start singing and again, I get distracted. So for me, classical music works really well, bossa nova, or maybe a music in a language that I don't understand. 
works absolutely perfectly. As long as I don't know what they're singing and I don't start singing with them, I can stay focused on track. So that's my tip with that. Now the next thing is my favorite tool for being more productive is a productivity planner. This is a tool that we created after having the experience of working from home and at first being completely distracted, not on topic, completely overwhelmed and not self-motivated in the beginning because when you work on your own, there's no boss, there's no manager, there are no colleagues, it's just you. And you have to create that routine where you are self-motivated to do the task that you need to do for the day. And also not overwhelmed by everything that you need to accomplish that day. This is how this product was born. We call it the productivity planner because it makes you more productive. And literally, not just because this tool has been created by us, but genuinely we created this to be more productive. It's night and day. When I use the productivity planner, I am just a million times more productive as opposed to not using it and just feeling completely overwhelmed by everything that I have to do and usually doing all the small tasks and never getting to the big task. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the structure of the productivity planner that you can start using it today in your life. You can just use a blank journal if you have one and use the same structure. It's super easy and very simple. So first you start planning your week. So you can start with that. And you know, we have inspiring quotes. This one says, I failed over and over again in my life. And that's why I have success. So the first thing you do is you, you do the weekly planning. So you kind of define what you need to do on any certain week. What are your big five things? And really, um, there's space for more, but there will be five big ones and then all the other small things that have to happen on that week. So that kind of gives you clarity and vision for your week and what needs to be accomplished that week. Then you move on to the daily planning. And again, you start with an inspiring quote. If you create your own journal, then just pick any quote that inspires you. And then basically the whole premises of the productivity planner is that you need to do the hard things first. Usually when we don't define what we need to do in any given day, we are just overwhelmed. We feel like whatever we need to do is just so big, there's no way we can tackle it. But once you start actually putting things on paper, you realize it's not that big. And you then break it down into smaller portions. So for example, if I were to say today, I need to film this video on how I am productive working from home. And then it is broken into little time slots. So because I'm filming, obviously I'm not gonna take breaks, but if I'm working in front of a computer, then you work in 25 minute increments. And then you call it the Pomodoro break, and then you take a break. Another thing I wanna mention, as you're working on your computer or you're having meetings virtually, you're not checking your phone, you're not Googling your Facebook or TikTok or any other social media platform, because this is the biggest distraction ever. So when you're doing the time slots and you're doing the 25 minute um, like focus work time, you're not distracted at all. You're like purely laser focused on whatever it is that you're doing, um, your balance sheets, if you're an accountant or whatever it is that you're working on. So for me, obviously right now I'm filming, so I'm not going to work in 25 minute increments, but if I were, let's say responding to emails, or writing something, then I would be taking breaks every 25 minutes. And when I take a break, that's when I when I can check my phone or do something like that, where I can get distracted for a couple of minutes. I personally, what I recommend doing on a break, if you are in a flow and you don't wanna take a break, then at least look away from your laptop. It is so important to like visually not stare into a computer for long periods of time. So every now and then, just look away, look into the window, look at nature, at trees, and then look back into your screen. So if you're in a flow, do that. But I do really recommend taking breaks. It has now been scientifically proven that when we do take breaks, that we are more productive. And what I like to do on my breaks is get myself, um, you know, make myself a cup of tea or grab some snacks. So I look forward to the end of the 25 minutes. So I'll go and grab some snacks or make tea. Or I also love to do a little stretch break. I'll tell you guys a very simple one that I personally do is I start with rolling the shoulders back. So I do this um, 10 times back. 
and then I do 10 times forward because again, we're sitting in front of the computer for hours at a time and it just really negatively affects the posture. So roll it forward. And then what I do is I give myself a nice big hug. Oh, especially if you're working alone, you need some physical touch, even if it's coming from yourself. And then I do this um, sort of a linking. So you link your hands together and you connect it and just hold that pose for like 20 seconds. 20 seconds. If you cannot connect your fingers in the back, that's okay. Um, just try to stretch as far as you can. And then switch your hands, do the same thing on the other side. Whatever you do, always balance out. And then the last thing I like to do is I like to stretch all the way down, let my head hang and just reach as long as I can. Again, I can touch my toes, but if you can't, that's okay. Just relax your head and just sway from side to side for a few seconds and then slowly, slowly, very slowly, you know, you bring yourself back into a standing position. And that's a really nice few, two, three minutes stretching routine that you can do on your Pomodoro breaks. And then, you know, at the end of the day, you add some other notes and you rate your productivity and any other things that you can do better the next day. So that's basically what I use every day. And like I said, it's a game changer. If I don't use this system, I just get distracted. I end up getting stuck in certain tasks and never getting to the other ones. This way I keep track of everything I have to do. So for example, um, to give you an idea of what else I put in my productivity planner today. So the first thing is to film the video, how long it's gonna take me, about four or five Pomodoros, so two to two and a half hours. Then another thing is get through my emails. I'm gonna give myself about an hour of that. So two Pomodoros and then record a podcast. So that's something I'm gonna be doing in the evening and it's going to take me again about an hour and a half, so three Pomodoros. So these are the big things. There's really not much more I can do in this day. And then I have some other smaller things that I will add, but really you can only do two to three big tasks in a day. Another important thing to mention is that working from home can be quite lonely, especially if you're an extrovert. One thing that I love doing is setting up coffee breaks or tea breaks with our team. And that way we get to chat about our day, what's going on, the books we're reading, the music we're listening to, and just like chit chat about everyday life. I feel like it's a great way to connect to other people if you're not leaving the house. Also, you can schedule something a bit longer and actually have lunches together virtually, which again is awesome you talk about work and life and everything like you normally would at a lunch break with your colleagues so I definitely recommend that one last thing uh, well actually two more things Another really important point to mention is that if you're working from home to set expectations with those people that live with you, whether it's your spouse, your children, or maybe your parents, because when you work from home, it just looks like you are chilling on your computer, but you're not, you're actually doing work. So when you create that designated space for you or if that little corner in the house and you name it office, you let people know that when you're in that corner, you're not just chilling on your computer, watching YouTube videos, you are actually working and you would appreciate appreciate not to be distracted while you're there. And that's just a really important thing to do. If I'm working from home and Alexi's here, then what I do with Alex is we just take shifts. If I'm on my computer working, then he's taking care of Alexa and vice versa. If he's working on the computer, then I'm with her playing, eating together or taking care of her in general. And that's just an important thing to mention if you're a parent and you're splitting the responsibility it's almost impossible to get distracted free time to work on your laptop if you have little children. Obviously, if you you have older kids, it would work the same way. You just have a clarity and you tell them that you are working right now when you're in the spot. And then every 25 minutes when you have a break, you can go give them a hug, kiss, have a little chat with them and then get back to your work. Now, the last thing I want to mention when working from home is that it's really important to set a finish time. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep working all day long. I find that it's harder to do when you own your own business because I've had my own business now for about 10 years. However, if you work for somebody, make sure that you set a deadline. You know, you finish at 5 p.m. and that's it. You're not checking your work email. You're not checking your work messages. You're just living life. And you need to create that separation from work 
um, to be able to really relax, replenish your energy, and then get back to work full of life and full of energy. So these are my favorite tips on working from home that I've been using for years. Now I'd love to hear from you if you also work from home, what are some of your favorite things to do to stay productive, to stay focused, and stay self-motivated? Please do share down below. Also, if you have enjoyed this video, please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And share it with a friend or a colleague. Thank you guys again. I love you very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!